students welcome to sunil's tutorial i'm sunil mirwani and today we'll be doing this chapter called as human reproduction let's continue where we left last time let's continue with the female reproductive cycle right we are continuing with the female reproductive cycle let's see what are the changes in the uterine wall the changes in the uterine wall and ovary during the menstrual cycle what are the changes that occur in the uterine wall and the ovary during the menstrual cycle right on the 28th day the cycle is of 28 days right on the 28th day you have low estrogen level since you have low estrogen level what will happen is there will be you will have menstrual discharge due to destruction of endometrium That's on the twenty-eighth day. Then from the fourth to the thirteenth day, from the fourth to the thirteenth day, there is an increase in the estrogen level. Increase in estrogen. Level. Now, due to the increase in the estrogen level, menstruation stops and proliferation of uterus takes place. Menstruation stops and proliferation of uterus takes place. Right now, also ovaries start producing new follicles. Ovaries produce new follicles. These are the changes that occur between fourth to the thirteenth day. Now, from the fourteenth to the twenty-sixth day. From the 14th to the 26th day, the progesterone level increases. Progesterone level increases. Right now, since progesterone level increases, ovulation and further proliferation of uterus would take place. Due to this proliferation of uterus, there would be a soft bed that would be formed on the inner wall of the uterus which is necessary for implantation and early blastocyst ovulation ovulation and further cycle next let's see what are the hormones playing an important role in the menstrual cycle
right? The first hormone that you have is FSH. That's your follicle stimulating hormone, right? Follicle stimulating hormone is from the anterior pituitary. I can say that follicle stimulating hormone is anterior pituitary hormone. There's a anterior pituitary hormone. It stimulates the ovaries. It stimulates ovaries to undergo proliferation. Proliferation. Right? Pro uh, proliferation. Does anybody know the exact meaning of the word proliferation? We've been using this for a long time now. Proliferation, simple language, cell division. Right? So it stimulates the ovaries to undergo proliferation to produce new follicles. To produce new follicles in the ovary. Right? That was the first hormone that plays an important role during the menstrual cycle. The next hormone that you have is LH. That's my second hormone. Luteal hormone. Right? From where is it? It is again from the anterior pituitary. It's anterior pituitary hormone. LH is the anterior pituitary hormone. What does it do? It stimulates the graphene follicle. It stimulates the graphene follicle. Right? It stimulates the graphene follicle to release the ovum. of releasing the ovum out called ovulation. That is, it brings about the process of ovulation. Right? Next, it also transforms the rest of the graphene follicular cells into corpus luteum. It also transforms rest of graphene follicular cells into corpus Newton. So those are the functions of LH. Next, the next hormone that you have is oestrogen. Now, it is the it is a female hormone secreted by the growing follicles in the ovary, right? Uh, these follicles are secreted in the ovary under the influence of FSH from the pituitary. Right? Enough accumulation of oestrogen in one of the follicles converts it into the graphene follicle. Then, oestrogen also brings about proliferation of the endometrial lining of the uterus. It also stimulates the development of female secondary sexual characters and it regulates the growth of the uterus in mammary it regulates the growth of uterus and mammary glands okay so those are the important functions of oestrogen it is 
of female hormone which is female hormone secreted secreted by growing follicles of the ovary right under the influence of fsh from the anterior pituitary gland What does it do? In a in a accumulation in a accumulation of estrogen in one of the follicles. Converts it into graphene polymer. Converts it into graphene follicle. Right. So the graphene follicle is formed because of estrogen. Then it also brings about proliferation of the endometrial lining. It brings about about Proliferation of endometrial lining of the uterus. Right? Proliferation of the endometrial lining that is it increases the blood supply and the endometrial glands in the uterus. Right? Then it stimulates the development. Stimulates the development of female secondary female secondary sexual characters. Then it regulates the growth. And the last hormone that we have is the progesterone. Right. Now, progesterone. It is an ovarian hormone secreted by the developing follicles as well as by corpus luteum. Right. What does it do? It stimulates the enlargement of sex organs. Controls the development of secondary sexual characters. Um, it stimulates the proliferation of endometrium. It stimulates the growth of maternal placenta after implantation, and it is re responsible for maintaining the pregnancy till term. So those are all the functions that are done by progesterone. Right? It is an ovarian. Hormone secreted by developing follicles as well as corpus luteum. Right? Then it stimulates. Stimulates the enlargement 
it stimulates the enlargement of sex organs and controls controls for development of secondary sexual characters. It stimulates the proliferation of endometrium. It stimulates the proliferation of endometrium. Right? Then it stimulates the growth of stimulates the growth. You need to know this all for your MCQs. Growth of maternal placenta after implantation. Then it is responsible for maintaining So those were the hormones that were responsible for the menstrual cycle. Now, let's see the human sperm. Next thing that we are going to see is the human sperm. It is made up of the head, the neck, the middle piece and the tail, right? Now, the head of the sperm is oval in shape and has a large nucleus. The head is covered with a cap which is made up of Golgi bodies. This is the cap, acrosome is the cap that covers the head of the sperm and this cap is made up of Golgi bodies. Right. Why do I need a cap there? Because it contains an enzyme, right? Uh, which enables the entry of the sperm into the ovum, right? It is this enzyme that will enable the sperm to enter the ovum. Fine, do you get this in here? The neck of the sperm, here's the neck, very short. The neck of the sperm is short with proximal and distal centrioles. There is a proximal distal uh, centriole here, there is a distal centriole, centriole there. Right? Then, the axial filament, you know, the filament that will start from the proximal centriole. There is your proximal centriole. This is the filament that would start from there. Now, the middle piece of the sperm is a spiral sheet of mitochondria around the axial filament. I showed you the axial filament. This is a spiral mitochondria that you have. Right? Now the tail of the sperm is the longest part. It has the axial filament surrounded by cytoplasm. Here is the tail. All here you have is cytoplasm. Right? The terminal part of the axial filament is called as the end piece, which is without the cytoplasm. Right? Now what is the significance of this? You have mitochondria and the sperm. Since it has mitochondria, it can store energy and it can provide energy for the sperm for its activity. Fine. Let me just write this down. It is composed of human sperm 
is composed of four parts. The first is called as the head, neck, middle piece, middle piece and the fourth part is the tail. Those are the four parts it is made up of. Right? Then I can say that the head of the sperm of the sperm is ovoid in shape with a large nucleus. Then the head has an acrosomal cap made up of Golgi bodies. Head has an acrosomal cap made of Golgi complex. Right? Why do I need that cap there? The acrosome of the sperm contains of the sperm contains an enzyme called hydra. Right, that is the enzyme that it has. Now, this particular enzyme that is iron neuron days digests the fitilan membrane of the ovum at the point to get entry to get the entry of us of the sperm to get the entry of a sperm right now the neck of the sperm is short neck of sperm is short with a proximal proximal and distal centrio right now from the proximal centrio you have an axial filament that comes out so I can say axial filament axial filament starts from Proximal sentry hole. Right? Then the middle piece has a spiral sheet of mitochondria. Middle piece has a spiral sheet of mitochondria around the axial filament. Around the axle phenomenon. Right. Then the tail of the sperm is the longest part of it. Tail of the sperm is the longest part. Right. Um, it has an axial filament surrounded by cytoplasm. It has an axial filament surrounded 
surrounded by cytoplasm. Right? Then you can have say you can say that the terminal part of the axial filament the terminal part of the axial filament is called end piece which is without cytoplasm right okay we will stop this here for the day thank you very much